um, I, I'll just start and say, I wanted to come today to talk about language and then listening this morning to being reminded of the, the guiding questions and some of the, the statements that are using to frame our time here today, came up with this really beautiful sentence. So I wrote it down, I wanna read it to you. So I wanna talk today about the role of language in elevating the meaning of participation to provide a deeper strategic intent in order for it to truly be a driving force for our cooperative success. That was, that was like an A plus, it got all three of the statements in there. Um, but yeah, so language is really, really powerful. Um, I think many of us know that language is really the first, changing language is the first step to changing a paradigm. So if you look at like death tax versus estate tax, like which one would you rather talk about? And we know that people manipulated these concepts in order to push their agendas forward. Similarly, you know, some people will go on diets and cleanses but have the exact same goals, but it's how they talk about it. Um, and I know for me it was a really profound experience the moment when I shifted from understanding cooperative primarily as an adjective to primarily as a noun. And I sense that might be a shift that a lot of people in this room can remember. Um, similarly, so we have this kind of for-profit, non-profit paradigm that we live in and that we think about business and productivity. But when we start to talk about co-ops, we start to talk about for people. And we don't really have a really adequate language for that. But I do think the conversation that we're having here today is, is starting to get at that. So to talk about kind of the, the shifts in language that the cooperative model provides to us to start to get at this different paradigm. Um, so the consumer worker producer, or I think maybe a better word would actually be, translates the individual into a member, which has such deeper meaning and really invites in a whole new paradigm. Similarly, fees to dues, volunteer discounts to patronage, volunteerism to participation, charity, which I think has a lot of baggage in terms of um, the history of, of religion in this world, and switching charity to solidarity, cooperation perhaps to justice, or as an association or federation to movement. Now I put a question mark after those last three because I think for most folks, those first four shifts are really comfortable. You know, like you can do that, no worries. The last three words, those solidarity, justice, and movement start to get into this place where I think a lot of people get a little squirmy um, and start to get a little bit uncomfortable. And I think that's because these are kind of dirty words for us. Um, I think when we hear those words, these are the kinds of images that we think, be it revolution, which for some of us um, necessitates violence, that revolution equals violence, can be kind of hippy-dippy, if you look there. Some of you may recognize the person in that photo, actually. Um, and then also even to think about the Red Scare or communism or what actually is fascism, more aptly, um, that those things are, are really scary for us, um, particularly um, in the U.S. context. Um, so for, for these, these concepts for us are, tend to be more alienating. Um, but in the rest of the world, they're often more inspiring. So you can see on the left, these are different flags and the word solidarity in different languages, that this is something that's very inspiring and motivates people to action. And my take on what this division is, is that in the US, when we think about collective action, we think more about bargaining and we think about winning or losing, like coming together to win, be it for the people, for the common good, but there's always an adversary. Um, on the flip side, I think there's a, there's a way that is harder for us to look at, this approach to collective power and collective organizing that isn't polarizing, that it's not about winning or losing, but it's about getting together the commons for the common good. And so why do we even need to bother thinking about this? So what is so important about the collective movement context? So why don't we just like say, oh, okay, those words and concepts have been dirtied, there's too much baggage, let's just leave them behind and move on to other words and other contexts. Um, because this collective and this movement, this larger movement context provides us some really key things in terms of motivation, because there's a, there's a greater purpose, it's a nice contextualization for what we're doing. Um, there's a sense of urgency, which really linking things to real needs and not just getting you know food from a grocery store in your community, that you can still get your food in most communities without a food co-op, but it links it to a greater sense of urgency and sort of food security throughout the world, justice for workers, ecological sustainability. And it also creates this greater sense of self. So you think about participating as a user, as an owner, um, but it extends that sense of self to a community. So what is my role as a cooperative? What is my role as a larger community? Um, and these, con these concepts that are within this kind of larger movement context and this collective power notion are really inherent to the cooperative identity. And I don't think make anybody squeamish in that context, that they really are very approachable. Um, and I think the question and the, or what I, th what I think is that 
cooperation and the work we're doing here to talk about participation can change the conversation about collective power. That we as the cooperative movement can try to rid some of these concepts of their baggage or even you know, find new words to talk about it like participation with a capital P um, to really bring back into our collective consciousness this notion that building power does not need to be adversarial, that building power really can be for the common good and nobody has to lose in order for us all to win. And so how do exactly are we gonna go out reclaiming ownership of these powerful concepts? So as I said, through the language of participation. So for me personally, that language of participation, what resonates with me is solidarity, movement building, organizing. In fact, I identify as an organizer, uh, collective power and social justice. I feel like these concepts are very fundamental and absolutely necessary in order for us to be successful in what the larger intent of our cooperative work is. Uh, the ICA, the International Cooperative Alliance, our APEX organization, offers some of these messages that I think serve the same purpose, but are maybe using terms that other folks are more uh, comfortable with. So a proven self-help model for good times and bad. People-centered businesses driving social innovation, putting people first. A growing and sustainable model of enterprise. So while I think that these are very different tones in their language, I think that we're all trying to work towards the same thing. And so I really want to encourage us to think really intentionally about what language we're using to talk about participation and what participation means on the individual level, on the level of the cooperative, and on the level of a global movement. Because how do we get that sense of belonging through to the other one billion people who are in this global movement with us together? How do we get that sense of belonging? Because we're not going to talk to them. We're not going to see the vast majority of them ever in our entire lives. And it is really towards creating a, a shared message and a common language about the work that we're trying to do. Thank you.